Thanks very much. Um, uh, it's, it's an absolute pleasure to be here. I'm a huge fan of the TED talks and, uh, and to have the opportunity to, to give one is uh, a, 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 a huge one. I'm going to talk fairly seriously about a fairly light-hearted topic, or possibly light-heartedly about a serious one, depending on your, on your point of view. Uh, many of you will know me as an environmentalist, or as an environmental scientist, as I prefer to, to call myself, because I'm not an activist. Um, I do think there is a place in the world for the green pieces and the Earth Life Africas of the, of the world. Uh, there's a place in the spectrum for them, uh, but I don't put myself in that bracket. What I am is a scientist. And so I'm well trained to look at evidence in front of me and to make decisions or to make a worldview based on the evidence, which um, makes my life interesting because I'm married to an energy healer. Um, <laughs> and uh, we just choose like a Republican and a Democrat living in the same house. We just don't talk about it. <laughs> but, uh, but one of the things that I have found is that the scientists out there are all very worried about the environment. And because they're generally not activist people, uh, they get sort of very insular in their worry. And so things like climate change and so on is, uh, is one of these issues that the more you know about it, the closer you are to the problem, the more concerned you are, which is actually quite unusual when we think about it. If you look at some of the other big issues in the world that have really got a lot of media attention lately, I think about something like swine flu made a lot more headlines than it probably deserved. Whereas climate change is the other way around. And if you want to see the people who really have sleepless nights, it is the, the guys who are gathering the data for, uh, for the South African National Biodiversity Institute, those sort of organizations. But all of, all of this you've heard over and over and over again. I'm not going to give you a, a climate change punt tonight. Um, what I want to chat to you about is, is, is some of the basic drivers we need to look at to, to really make real change environmentally, but just generally in South Africa as well. When I, uh, I was in the process of writing a book uh, last year, year before last, I think, and, um, and I was faced with this issue. How do you get people to actually embrace environmental change? Because generally it's seen as something that's going to cost you money, uh, you're going to have to give up eating hot dogs, or never drink a glass of wine again, or you've got to walk to work, something like that, wear wooden shoes. It's not going to happen, all right? Um, and so I wrestled with this problem a lot. And eventually I came up with a little, little mind game, which I'm going to invite you to play with me today. Okay? We draw a little uh, triangle in your mind. Okay? I like to paint mine green, uh, but you can paint yours any color you like, I suppose. But green is good. And uh, on each corner of the triangle, you're going to put three things that are very, very important. One is health. One is wealth. And one is happiness. Okay? Health, wealth, happiness. So three things all of us are always looking for. Health is easy to define, okay? Just living in the way that your body was supposed to live, being fit and healthy and eating properly, okay? Not a problem there. By wealth, I mean saving money, okay? More than I necessarily mean making the stuff hand over fist. But certainly uh, moving in an, in an economically efficient way. But happiness is the interesting one. Because by that I mean doing things that have been scientifically proven to make you happier in the long term. And we're going to discuss that more in a moment. Anyway, if you change your life, okay, in any way, do anything in your life that improves your life in two of those three things, improves that triangle, makes that triangle larger in two of those three directions. Health makes you happier and healthier, healthier and wealthier. What's the other one? Wealthier and... Happier, okay? <laughs> if you can do that, that change will be environmentally beneficial as well. It is such a magic little triangle, but it works. So, I put solar panels on my house, okay? It's going to make me wealthier because it's going to save me money every single month. Okay, solar geezer. It's going to make me happier because, okay, the last two days accepted... When the electricity goes off, I'm still going to have hot water. Okay. I'm going to eat more veggies and less meat. I'm going to decrease my meat intake so that meat becomes a condiment rather than a main course. I'm going to be wealthier because veggies are much cheaper. And I am going to be healthier as well because veggies are better for you. 
and the world is going to be uh, is, is going to is going to uh, benefit because meat takes a far larger proportion than uh, than than uh, than veggies do. And then the third the third sort of line of the triangle would be let's say uh, I choose to go and use my green spaces more. Go for go go for more walks in a park. Okay. That is environmentally friendly because obviously when we use our green spaces, they get better protected by the government. Okay. But it makes me healthier because I'm getting more exercise, and it makes me happier as well because I'm being more exposed to green things and chlorophyll and fresh air. Okay. Just three examples. But I, I, I challenge you as you're driving home today, play with the triangle. Any change that you can make that is going to improve you in two of those three ways is going to be a more environmentally friendly way of living as well. And suddenly, the whole green thing gets easy because it's selfishly driven. Make your own life better. And I promise you now, the world will take care of itself. There's a fantastic poster that um, is not really too safe for work in terms of being able to put it up on the TV or anything, uh, the language that they use. But essentially, it says, uh, the world has been here for a billion years. It's not the world that is in, tr in trouble. It's the people who are fucked. And I really do believe that. I think the only reason that climate change and all the environmental disasters are a problem right now is because we're here ex experiencing them, and that's why we need to do something. So make the changes selfishly. I promise you, promise you now the world will be fine. But I want to talk about that one little triangle, that one little corner of the triangle, this happiness issue, because it's something that I really, really do think our leaders are completely missing the plot. My very, very favorite piece of research that has been done in the last four years, five years, is where they had a look at, at what point does the correlation between money and happiness end, okay? Uh, if you ha uh, have no money at all and someone gives you one rand, that, 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 makes, that makes you happy, and so on. And it carries on going up. Money and happiness are very, very closely correlated until when the research was done, 8,000 rand a month in 2,006 rands, I think that was. Okay, 8,000 rand, 2,006 rand. So let's call that, let's call that 12,000 rand a month now. Okay, and we're talking about for a family now. Okay, a household, 12,000 rand a month. It's not a lot of money, but if you're earning 12,000 rand a month, your kids are eating three times a day. They have got shoes. They're going. You have a, probably a choice of which school they're going to. You can afford to get some form of reasonable health care if something goes wrong, and you probably have a network that will hold you if you lose your job or if someone dies or something like that. That 12,000 rand a month is the threshold at which your human needs are taken care of. Thereafter, there's no or very, very little correlation between more money and more happiness. Thereafter, it's the quality of your marriage, the satisfaction of the work that you do, those sort of things make a difference in your happiness. And so what I think we need to do is really, really look hard at the way that we view human happiness. Because at the moment, it's completely linked to consumerism. The more things we've got, the more happier we're going to be. And every single piece of advertising tells you that. <laughs> but, but what we need to realize is that if you look at people who spend money on things and compare them, to people who spend money on experiences. The people who spend money on experiences are happier, and they're more popular amongst their peers, because they're more interesting. Okay? It's just generally better to, to spend, uh, to, to talk about experiences if you ha you've had than things you've bought. And the interesting thing, of course, is a consumer-driven culture, which was based around experiences rather than possessions, would also be an incredibly green consumer culture. Because as it is at the moment, we have a situation where we've got a car with two pedals, accelerator and a brake, okay? The accelerator is, the, is, 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 is consumerism, and the brake is the environmental, various environmental programs that you're exposed to all, all the time. And we are trying to jam down both, the, both pedals at the same time. It doesn't work, okay? We've got to look at programs that drive human happiness above and beyond anything else. We need to have a minister of happiness. Okay. What a great job to have. <laughs> and the reason I say that is because if you look at the happiest countries in the world, okay, they also happen, the correlation between that list of the happiest countries in the world and the greenest countries in the world are very closely linked. Costa Rica, 
happiest and most environmentally friendly country in the world. Okay? Costa Rica has huge biodiversity, fantastic rainforest, beautiful beaches, apparently very, very happy people as well. They also don't have a military, do not have an army. They've got a sort of Coast Guardy thing. And that's it. <laughs> they can't spend money on Corvettes and Gripens, even if they wanted to, because they've got nowhere to put them. Okay. And I really, really do think that what we need to do is start having a look at all the things that science has proven make us happy, spending our money on experiences rather than things, putting green spaces into our neighborhoods, because it's been shown that just exposing a child with ADD to a walk through a green park before he sits down and does his homework massively improves his concentration for the rest of the afternoon. Uh, having green trees and parks in low-income areas, even if those kids don't use those parks, okay, lowers the obes obesity rates, improves school marks. Now, that research is North American, so it's, it's a little bit different here because we have fairly low-density poor areas. But certainly, the, the existence of, of greenery within our, our poorest areas in South Africa is an absolute must-do. And so I would just love to see South Africans realize the huge potential for happiness we have. Because while Costa Rica sits at one, we're at 118. Okay? And we're round about there. I think we're about 92 or so when it comes to environmental issues. And the only reason we're at 92 and not at 118 is we happen to have very good environmental laws. No one obeys the things, but they're very, very good laws. Okay. And so I would just like us to begin to say, you know what? Enough with the crap that we fill our minds with in South Africa. We are such a good place. And let's just recapture a little bit of that enthusiasm that we had in 94. Now, I feel a little bit like I'm speaking to the converted, because this is a room that is full of hope, uh, just from the sort of people that we've been listening to and so on. But I think that if, we, if, if the one message we take out of here is that we stop worrying about the big issues, and we start saying, every decision that I make, how will that improve my long-term happiness? And maybe how will it improve some of the happiness, the, the happiness of some of the people that I'm living with? Does it mean harnessing technology so that I work from home? Does it mean um, creating bus lanes? You know, solve the taxi problem by giving them their own lane. It's the most environmentally friendly way we've got to travel in Johannesburg. We forget that. Okay? Taxi commuters kick your ass when it comes to, to, to carbon footprints. And yet, and yet we blame them for just about everything that's, that's, that's wrong on our roads. I think there's so many opportunities. Let's just be a happier country and allow the environmental issues that we're facing to take care of themselves. Thank you very much, guys. Cheers.